I just watched a discussion between Joe Rogan and Douglas Murray about people abandoning religion, but still having this religious instinct. So they have to replace religion with some religion substitute. And Rogan and Murray talk about wokeism as a kind of cult and the new atheism as a kind of religion substitute. I'll probably make another video going through that part of the discussion because it's one of the topics I'm really interested in, but haven't talked about much on my channel. Here, I want to take a look at what Douglas Murray says about certain Christian values that are left over when people abandon Christianity and these values becoming a kind of religion. What Murray says reminds me of something G.K. Chesterton said in Orthodoxy. Very important point. So just for context, at first, they're talking about Mormonism and how Mormons are nice people even though they believe weird things. Then Rogan compares Mormons to the new woke crowd. That's it's sort of the same principle sort of applies to when people just accept, you know, like with wokeism, when you accept, accept these ideological givens that aren't logical. They don't make any sense. I, I wonder if it's the same with societies. You know, I think that uh, it's a thing like post-religious peoples. Just because you've lost the religion doesn't mean you've lost the religious instinct. Right. You're still looking for it. People can lose their religion, but still have the religious instinct. They still need some shared system of beliefs and values that unites them with other people, some cause to rally around and perhaps to fight for. It seems like that's an inherent part of being a person. I agree. And I, I don't think, I don't say it's bad. It's just, it is part of what we are. And uh, it seems to me very clear that, for instance, you know, you take Christianity out and other things will be put in. Mm -hmm. uh, and they don't even need to be identifiable religions. So Christianity is your religion or the religion of a society. And then you remove Christianity, but you haven't removed the religious instinct. So you have to replace it with something else. I mean, our own age has decided in much of the West that there's this sort of form of uh, watered down spillover of Christianity, which will become the sort of religion, which is the kind of diversity, inclusion, equity world where you constantly struggle for greater justice, mm. all of which is a sort of very watered down version of a little bit of Christianity. Most people in the ancient world would have had no clue what you're talking about if you started saying that all people are created equal or that you should honor all people or that you should love all people, even your enemies. It would have been absurd to them to think that people in our time should care about what's happening to Uyghurs in China or Christians and Hindus in Pakistan. Christianity came along and injected certain ideas into society. The idea that all people are created in the image of God, that God loved people so much that he entered creation and was crucified for them and so on. And certain virtues follow from those ideas. It's wrong to treat human beings in certain ways, even if they're your enemies, even if they have nothing to do with you. If one person is oppressing another or violating the rights of another, or if one group is oppressing another, something is out of balance in the world and it needs to be corrected. In a society where people are united in their belief in Christianity, Christianity is what holds these ideas together. What happens when the society rejects Christianity? Well, it doesn't necessarily reject the values or the virtues. Instead, the values or the virtues can become a new kind of religion. But it's we are funny. we are searching for 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 things at the moment. Yeah, and it seems very obvious to me. I mean, I, it's, you know what plenty of people have called them, like things like the religion of anti-racism, the religion of social justice, all that stuff. They are all something to do, you know. Yes. Uh, some very, very deep level, like you've, you've had your purpose today, like mm -hmm. you've had your five fruit and veg, you've had your meaning. Yeah. So now we have people rallying around some virtue that they're going to defend, but because they've abandoned what connected that virtue to other virtues, the virtue is sort of suspended in midair on its own, like a magic floating idol that demands worship and obedience. I said that Murray's comments reminded me of something G.K. Chesterton said in Orthodoxy. Orthodoxy was published in 1908, so more than a century ago. But look at what Chesterton said about a certain problem he noticed in the early 20th century. 
The modern world is not evil. In some ways, the modern world is far too good. It is full of wild and wasted virtues. When a religious scheme is shattered, as Christianity was shattered at the Reformation, it is not merely the vices that are let loose. The vices are indeed let loose, and they wander and do damage. But the virtues are let loose also, and the virtues wander more wildly, and the virtues do more terrible damage. The modern world is full of the old Christian virtues gone mad. The virtues have gone mad because they have been isolated from each other and are wandering alone. Thus, some scientists care for truth, and their truth is pitiless. Thus, some humanitarians only care for pity, and their pity, I am sorry to say, is often untruthful. The modern world is full of the old Christian virtues gone mad. The virtues have gone mad because they have been isolated from each other and are wandering alone. People can fixate on justice and be ready to burn the world to the ground in their pursuit of justice because justice is no longer connected to anything else. People can fixate on love and become insanely stupid because their love is no longer connected to truth. People can fixate on truth and become absolute monsters because ethics just isn't something that can be proven scientifically. You can see the impact of fixating on a single virtue even in the history of Christianity. If all you care about is truth and you have the truth, what do you do if someone doesn't agree with you? Well, since loving your enemies and honoring all people have been swept under the rug of your life's mission, you might start slaughtering heretics in the name of God. People did that after being commanded to love their enemies and to honor all people. Imagine what they'll do once they've completely abandoned the fabric that ties the virtues together, and there's actually nothing left in their ideology or their conscience that connects truth to love, or love to justice, or justice to truth.